Hey guys, welcome back to the series of tutorial on electrical power system protection. In this video, I'm going to look at the objectives of protection. We're going to see and discuss the basics. So in our quest to understand protection system, there is a question to be asked. What exactly are we protecting? Well, local protection, protection of immediate equipment, minimize disruption of loads, duration or interruption or abnormal conditions, larger system issues. These are the type of protections that we are protecting, the type of system that we are protecting. Large cities that depend on substations to supply them non-stop continuously. That's what we are protecting. The impact on stability of larger system is very critical. So we have to protect the potential for distant impact also. The quality of power that are delivered to various cities. That is very important. So we are protecting to provide to make sure that power is delivered continuously with good qualities. What exactly are we protecting? We ask. Well, a failure to protect the system in case of a fault will result in fire. As we can see in this picture here, this is a transformer that is on fire. This is as a result of a system failing to protect. Maybe a, a, um, a circuit breaker somewhere didn't react, failed to open its contact. As a result, we have a huge fire. So those are the system that we are protecting. What are we exactly protecting? This, like you can see here, the aftermath of a, of a fire in a substation. And this one here appear to be a distribution transformers in flame. These are the kind of things that we are protecting. Because as a result, you're going to have fire. And that will destroy the equipment. That are so important for the system. What exactly are we protecting? We are protecting large generators in case of a fault. We are protecting important installation that may result in high cost for repair. Those are the kind of things that we are protecting. In the next slide, we're going to look at the action that need to be taken in case of a fault. So what event require protective actions? Obviously, in case of a fault, a protective action need to be taken. A relay must energize and it must treat a circuit breaker. Those are the kind of issue that may result for a protective action to be taken and we also have abnormal operations let's say you have a circuit that is supposed to operate in 10 amps of current and all of a sudden you have a current exceeding 10 amps 15 amps that is an abnormal operation it's a fault occurring therefore your system need to react to that and cut off the power what exactly are we protecting here we look at the main objectives of protections the main objective of protections, just to simplify with the tree, it is to safeguard the entire system, to ensure continuity of supply, abnormal operation, to minimize damage and repay cost, which is very important, really. And to ensure safety of, of personnel. You can see all of these three elements are very important. Here, the keyword is continuity of supply. You don't want a city to stay in the dark because of a failure that's happened in a substation. A failure that probably just touched a part of a substation that was affected. Some parts still operational, but because the system was not well set, then you have a situation where supply continuity is interrupted. So this is very important. Then you have to minimize the cost. You don't want for a system failure you have a whole substation on fire, transformers coming on fire, generators, expensive equipment, 
card and transformers damage circuit breaker you want to limit the damage so that your repair cost is minimized and you have to ensure the safety of personnel maybe someone is attending into a, a maintenance issue and he need to be protected you don't want someone to accidentally come in contact with a live wire and and then kill himself get electrocuted so important safety precaution uh, precautions and and security must be in place those are the main objectives of a protection system now the general requirement of a protection system are all protective systems must comply with the following requirement it must be sensitive enough to detect a fault in an early stage very important because if a fault is happening before it's become too late to stop and isolate the system your transformer your your circuit breaker need to be sensitive enough to detect what we call a protection scheme and it must be absolutely reliable the simpler the sturdier the better it need to be reliable something you can rely on it must discriminate between a fault in another section and this is very critical like for instance you have a substation is made of different sections there might be a fault occurring in one section if a system is well protected there will be a circuit breaker unit that will be able to deal with the fault in that section before it affect other section therefore continuity of supply is maintained but if your systems are not able your system is not able to discriminate the, the fault on other system then it will shut down the entire system while it could have just handled uh, one section so really those are the the general requirement of a protection system thank you guys for for watching please like and subscribe in the next tutorial i'm going to be talking about the qualities of protection and the important definitions in this important definition we're going to look at the definition of a fault current what is a fault current what is an overcurrent and i'm going to include some demonstration in simulation just to distinguish between some of those fault current overcurrent how they affect the circuit so guys stay tuned Thank you for watching again. Cheers. So guys, stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Cheers.